Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm a 19-year-old MUN student from Torbay, Newfoundland. I'm Leslie Tucker. I'm 36 years old and I'm from St. John's, Newfoundland. I'm a bit of a goofball. I do uh, stand-up comedy and I run the MUN Improv program. I study psychology at MUN. I love animals. Um, that's the reason I ended up going to do the program I did in graduate school. So I have bipolar disorder. I like to say that I have bipolar disorder because I want to get away from saying I am bipolar because I don't think it truly defines me. It's just something that adds to what I've become. Bipolar disorder is categorized mostly by highs which are manic and lows which are depressive. My parents described me as a worrier when I was a kid. I was a worry wart. I was a happy kid. I had a happy childhood. Um, but um, I have a memory. I was attached to things. I was very attached to things staying the way they were. I didn't like change. I became attached to inanimate objects. <laughs> I cried when we gave away our blender, um, a random chair, uh, a dishwasher, because <laughs> it meant change. But then going into grade seven, I started experiencing a lot of anxiety. I transitioned to um, French immersion. And I didn't know it at the time, but I have dyslexia. And so I think any coping mechanisms that I had in elementary school um, just stopped working <laughs> in French immersion. And so I used to come home just about every other day and just cry because I didn't, I was completely overwhelmed. I discovered uh, I was bipolar when I was about 14 years old in grade nine. I was having, I went on a major manic phase. Eventually my dad uh, asked me if I was okay on a car ride and uh, I told him I wasn't and that we should see somebody and we went into the Janeway and did a few interviews with a few different doctors and Eventually, I was admitted to J4D. The summer between grades uh, 9 and 10, my parents took me to see a psychiatrist because they were concerned. My first psychiatrist, um, pretty much right off the bat, diagnosed me with depression. And not long after that, he left the province. I had another psychiatrist, and she identified anxiety as the major component. My mental health first manifests itself with how I interact with my friends and my family. I either slow down in my talking and have a lot of trouble speaking, or I can, in terms of highs, I can get very rapid thoughts and rapid speaking. So I find isolation is an aggravating factor, so I find when I'm living alone, night times can be hard, and part of it is just feeling cut off from everybody. So there's times when I get depressed and I have a thousand thoughts in my head, but they're all negative and it's really hard for me to speak because each word that I say, there's 10 thoughts telling me about how that's not the right word, how you can't say that or how people are going to react to that. I know Facebook can be a rough one because um, of the comparison that naturally takes place. I think that's one thing I struggle with a lot, and I think it's super, super, super common that that gap between where you think you should be and where you think other people are and the reality of where you are and how you just cannot be okay with that or it feels like you can't be okay with that. If I'm not sleeping properly, that can easily lead towards me going high or low. In moments like that where I feel like I'm on the verge of panic, like extreme panic, um, Oftentimes I'll just sort of mentally in my mind gather in my community, like here are all the people <laughs> that, I, that I love and that uh, I know um, support me and who I in turn support and it's like it is this gathering and you just feel like, okay, <laughs> you know, the feeling is that I'm alone in this, the reality is I'm not. Friendship plays a massive role in my mental health because uh, those are the people that I spend the most time with, I, I hang out with them. On, throughout the night, throughout days, and uh, they really put a positive spin on my interactions with everyone because they, they really push me up in terms of trying new things, in terms of uh, speaking out and speaking to them about my mental health, and I help them when they have troubles as well. Uh, I spoke a little while ago um, at the Mental Health Week launch and I was sort of reflect, reflecting back on how important community has been for me, and it's hugely, hugely important. 
I have had the really good fortune to have a really supportive family and um, in moments of crisis in particular they've been awesome and really stepped in. I love advocating for mental health because it's really good to be able to show people that I am, can function well as an individual uh, no matter what I'm going through. Uh, I don't like the picture where we talk about the success story of mental health as if the person in front of the camera is all better now, that they, they have mastered mental health, they understand it, and they are now a successful person because they have dealt with mental health. Uh, but that's just not necessarily how it works. It's a constant state of management. It's not, I'm good now, I'll be good for the rest of my life. It's more, I think I'm okay, and I need to keep thinking whether or not I'm all right. I really believe that my physical health is very important. I go to the gym as much as I can. I go for runs. I swim a lot. Obviously yoga is a big one. <laughs> we are in my yoga room or the, the studio where I go. Um, I find that really, really important. Um, and in periods of stress, um, I found it I mean, I think it's important to practice it all the time because you don't want to just experience it when you're in a moment of crisis because it's a very different experience than you'd have if you were not in a moment of crisis. Um, so the practice of it, the consistent practice, is really important. For me, my, my picture of mental health includes a lot of fear and panic. It's just part of it. It's, it's, the full experience and and I like people I value being able to hear the voices of people who talk about their lives in those terms like life is complicated and there are really rough patches and you know here's my experience of that and here's my experience now and it's nothing to say that I'm not going to go through that again or something really similar but this is part of my tapestry and I just like I like hearing those voices I really really value that It's really not something that has to define you. It's something that you have to watch out for. It's something you have to manage. It's something you have to keep track of, but it's not something that'll ever hold you down.